Hey, this is Marley Cox, tight end for the Indianapolis Colts, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway back with you. Wednesday, December 30th. The clock is running out on 2020. <laughs> and the fantasy football season. No. Oh. In the middle of week 17 analysis, which is really the the best kind. So predictable. <laughs> so much fun um deciding if players will play through the entirety of a game. But we're here for you. And really, that's always. We're a year-round fantasy football podcast, so we are with you through week 17. We're with you after the season. Somebody messaged this morning and asked, uh, is all of our off-season content you know, dynasty-related? And the answer is really no, it's not. There is some dynasty mixed in. All of your you know, mailbag and questions are very oftentimes oriented to keeper and dynasty leagues because those are the leagues active during the off-season. And a lot of off-season talk, really what you're talking about for redraft is 100% the same stuff you're talking about for Dynasty. You're talking about free agent moves. You're talking about uh, rookie prospects. You're, I mean, th in the off-season, it's, it's almost one and the same. Yeah, that's a good point. And we do a lot of reflecting on the year. We have the Truth Series. We have the awards coming out. And uh, we have a lot of shows that are just, uh, you know, we have strategy shows as well, talking about how you think um, about fantasy football. I We got word yesterday, the, the final results on the Fantasy Pros Accuracy uh, stuff came out. And uh, congratulations to uh, Pat Fitzmorris for, for finishing number one on that. Um, really proud of our team here. Mm -hmm. In the last four years, we've been able to put together a level of consistency on the accuracy side that I think we're all really, really proud of. Uh, but that's really, you know, it's a little overrated. I'm going to just say it. It's true. It's true. It, it's overrated because there's so much nuance. And I mean, we're top 10, you know, four years in a row. <laughs> four years in a row. Totally overrated. Overrated because the, your league, uh, this show pounds it into your head all year long about how contextual your decision is. Do you need to score more this week? Are you the favorite? Do, what is your opponent doing? Um, the waiver wire. Everything's different and contextual to your league. So we'd rather train you how to think. Mm -hmm. about fantasy football so that you can make the decisions that are best for your league. Teach a man to fish. Right. So the start-sit tool, it's got and its role. he'll have disgusting food. Yeah, you don't like <laughs> fish, huh? I'm, I'm, it's growing on me. It's, it's, really? I, it's palatable. Now, did All that right. start with your um, adventure into sushi? Yeah, did yeah. Did that open your mind a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, I started with the California roll, as, mm, right. as all people do. With, yeah, Because it's the training wheels. Because it's not really, yeah, it's not actually sushi. <laughs> And you're like, oh, I like this. I like the sauce. All right. And then then before you know it, you're slurping down uh, sashimi. Yeah, baby. <laughs> the California roll is absolutely the way that you can feel like you're one of the rest of the people that eat sushi. <laughs> one of the cool so, kids. So like you can go to the restaurant with the friends and be like, yeah, I'm doing it too. And then that's pretty much where I stopped. At the California roll? Yeah, and the spicy... Uh, crab roll. Spicy crab. I, mean, I like crab a lot more. I mean, uh, do you do a spicy tuna roll? I, I have, yeah. but, but I stay with the spicy crab. I, I like the like, sweeter stuff. I feel like that's a tricycle. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree completely. I do not claim to be part <laughs> of that crew. Um, but anyways, I, we were talking about fantasy football or something. And uh, people ask, well, what do you talk about in the off season? Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do have a quick question today. Um, now, this is just confusing, Brooks. This question camp comes from Dallas in Washington. Yeah. Uh -huh. Really? Really? Bonjour? <laughs> 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 uh, we also had 
this question several places over on Instagram as well, which uh, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. When would be a good time to do a dynasty startup draft for 2021? Because we are turning the page mm -hmm. here soon. Uh, oh, man. Everyone wants to say now. Everyone wants to be like, now, now, now. It's so fun. I want to do it. But it would probably be a mistake. It would. Because in the next few months, so you need free many agency to shake things out. will change. I, you need free agency to shake out at the very least. And probably you want to see what happens in the, in the rookie draft. Yes. Right when the rookie draft is done, that's when we usually schedule all of our rookie drafts as well as startup drafts. Because at that point, I mean, when you have a startup dynasty draft, it's it is so much more important than any other draft in any other type of league. You're you're talking about the next five years of your league will be established by that, and it just stinks when it's like you have this draft and you you think certain things about players, and then all of a sudden a month later, this player's cut, that player's changing teams, uh, this per rookie's added. Perfect example would be because everybody's excited, and I understand that. I, I would want to be able to be making trades, but a perfect example would be what happened with Leonard Fournette this past year where, you know, he was being drafted in redraft leagues in third round. Right. And so in dynasty drafts, you know, that is a potentially wasted dynasty pick. Obviously he had some here and there value this year, but those situations are pretty pretty crazy. So um by the way, just speaking of that situation, I saw some stats on James Robinson this morning. You know that's the greatest rookie season ever by an undrafted Rookie running back? Really? While missing two games. He played 14 games and ended up with 1,414 total yards. So he shut down for the season, but he is uh, on a team with a negative game script constantly. And a bad quarterback where you could stack the box. That's impressive. Yeah. I, I will say I love James Robinson. Every time I watched him play, like this guy is – how did the NFL miss so badly on James Robinson? Like Philip Lindsay. Right. But Agumba Wale also looked very good this past week. If he looks great again on Sunday, th then you're – not that you're going to take away from James Robinson, System but you go – running back. You go, whoa, Jacksonville apparently figured out how to run the ball. They certainly committed to it. Yeah. By, by uh, all measures. Establish and, it. But next year, Trevor Lawrence will be the quarterback and, and James Robinson will be the running back based on what we know today. All right, but yeah, I would I would follow these guys' advice about delaying so that you get a better lay of the land and then enjoy your startup draft, enjoy your rookie draft if you if you do that separately, which, you know, most people do. And um it'll be fun. Dynasty's great. It's a great format. It is. All right, uh what else is going on this week, Brooks? We want to let people know what shows are coming up. We've got a New Year's Eve show tomorrow where we are once again Megalodony. <laughs> yeah, just the way the schedule worked out this year, we won't be releasing a new show on New Year's Day, so we'll have a double dose of Week 17 analysis tomorrow. Oh, man, the only thing better than Week 17 is a double dose <laughs> of Week 17. You got it. You got it. And then we have, uh, when is the footy voting day because we got nominations going out for the footy awards yeah nominations will be announced on the tuesday episode and right when that gets published mm. the voting is open and i know you're already working towards uh getting those ballots ready well, it's not just brooks there are hundreds of right. people brooks leads a team of hundreds yes of uh footy nomination he even he even utilizes as a very kind of him, he utilizes his staff his uh, from his yes, house yes uh, he uses all of his <laughs> butlers and maids and they they come to work for the footies during this time of year is very know, gracious I didn't even know the Downton Abbey that show was based on one of his forefathers that's right they filmed it at his house right yeah so that's amazing but yeah Tuesday on socials <laughs> on the show. <laughs> Get ready to vote on Tuesday because oh. then the winners are announced on the Thursday episode. It's so it's so nice. He's so humble. He doesn't want to talk about his wealth. He right. lets us talk about it, but then he focuses on the show. Yeah. So, Footy Awards coming up soon. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. All righty. Week seventeen buy or sell, the best kind. 
Can I sell week 17? Is that just an option? You can. You can, yeah. Just the week? Yep. How much does that go for on the open market? Not much. Not much. Jalen Hurts against Washington this week. Buy or sell 325 total yards. Mm. So we're not talking passing yards. We're talking total yards, rushing, passing. Uh, Washington's a good defense. Certainly better than Arizona and Dallas, where he put up over 400 total yards. Washington's allowing only around 300 total yards. Um, so it's going to be very difficult for Jalen Hurts to get 325 total yards. I'm selling. You're selling that he will not get to that number. Correct. Yeah, Washington is good. Washington's very good. I'm going to buy, and here's why. Washington's defense is good. I I am not taking anything away or or denigrating what they've done, but when you look at the total amount of yards that they give up and you look at their schedule, obviously they are in the NFC East, so they've been play they, they never played the DAC Broncos ver or the DAC Cowboys version. They've played, you know, some some poor offenses. Sure. Um recently, you know, they played against Pittsburgh while they were reeling and whatever's going on with Big Ben and uh, you know, Cincinnati without Burrow. So it is one of those where I think the defense is good, but the yardage totals are a little deflated. So I'm going to say that Jalen Hurts gets it done. Three twenty five total yards. Whew. Three hundred twenty five. So over the past couple weeks he has surpass that with just passing yardage uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna buy it as well i i buy jalen hurts as a quarterback i buy his ability he's i think he's gonna be a special player what did you think of his performance last week uh it the turnovers were the problem like that's where the rookie came out you know, the in the turnovers other than if if he could have figured out how to not turn the ball over it would have been a much different situation they, the Philadelphia Eagles would still be in the playoff hunt. Unfortunately, there was a mini meltdown there at the end of the game. Uh, so it was it was not what you were hoping for, but you could still see the flashes and you could still see uh, him being the future of the Eagles. We were real close to a devastating performance from Jalen Hurts last week for fantasy mm -hmm. because one 81-yard touchdown pass to Deshaun Jackson was his only touchdown pass of the game um, but uh, we'll see what he does against Washington this week. It'll be – they're not playing for a spot, but they're playing for some pride. Oh, and you're, and, and you're he's playing, a rookie. If you if – he, if they beat Washington, they can – they knock them out. Yes. So th th this is not just a pride against a divisional rival. This is actually – you're playing playoff spoiler against your division rival. Kenyon Drake, does he finish as a top 20 running back against the Los Angeles Rams defensive front this week? He has hit that mark in four of the past six games. One of them was against the Rams previously. Um, his average finish over the last seven weeks is RB20, so I imagine that's where Brooks got that line. Uh, this week I will buy that, yeah. I will buy a top 20 mm. finish from Kenyon Drake. Chase Edmonds has been banged up. Drake gets a lot of unnecessary work around the goal line. Well, not unnecessary because he, he does succeed, but they certainly love running it right yeah, up the middle. I mean, what's the, the analogy of the, the old antidote, the blind squirrel? Yeah. Finds like, even the blind squirrel can get it done. And Kenyon Drake on the goal line, it's it, it, when he spiked the ball this past week, after trying 50 times at the goal line to get in, then he spikes the ball like he has triumphantly done something great. Get it bothered you? that crap out of my face. You barely got in, and you had been stuffed so many times before that. It is needless. Stop running Kenyon Drake up the middle on the goal line. It is infuriating. Kenyon that Drake, is 10 for 26, 18 for 45 the past two weeks. Yeah, that, it is absolutely infuriating, the, the play calling, the utilization. But for fantasy purposes, it gets the job done. In fact, over the last 11 weeks, there have only been two games where he finished outside the top 25. So I think top 20, I'm going to lock that in. I will buy. Uh, I will, I'm selling it. Okay. Just um, figure he doesn't get into the end zone, and that'll take him out of yeah, that Yeah, I, I understand that they will have a backup quarterback, and Cooper Cup is – Cooper Cup got put on the COVID list. Is that right? That's right. I, I believe he will not be there this week. Right. And so that – well, we don't know. We don't know if he is positive or if he's a contact, so that I'm not declaring uh, Cooper Cup out right now, but there are – our offense is up against it. 
their defense is still good. Yes. And this is win and get in. I'm betting against Kenyon Drake against the Rams. Kenyon Drake on the season, if it were to end today, is the running back 14. He has a chance to hit 1,000 yards for the first time in his career. And this would be his best fantasy finish, uh, even though his stretch run last year was much better than what he's done this year as a whole. It is just speaking to his whole season, He's he's been pretty good. It is interesting to see his snap percentage in that beautiful, beautiful time last year mm-hmm. was up at 70%, and this year it's back at 54%. And the passing game work is what's held him back from being a top five, top six type of player. Corey Davis at Houston. Is he a top 20 wide receiver against that invisible Houston secondary? Mm. How much will he redeem himself after cooking up a Christmas goose in in Green Bay? (laughs) Uh, Two targets, 5.3 targets over the past eight games. Been very boom bust. I'm actually going to buy it. Um, Ooh. You know I'm not an apologist for Corey Davis. You are not. I watched that whole Green Bay game and – you know, the blizzard played a part, but it really almost distracted you from what actually happened on the field, which is Jair Alexander stays on the left side of the field. Corey Davis, more often than not, lined up on the right side of the field with A.J. Brown out on the left. Jair got more Corey Davis. They avoided Jair, and the rest is history. Yeah, and <clears throat> I watched the Houston Texans game last <laughs> week. Uh, so I will also buy, because goodness gracious, uh, they are so giving in this uh, holiday season. I will buy Corey Davis top twenty, and I will sell simply based on Derrick Henry, the Yeti. Oh, he's gonna have a good time. Yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna have a very fun. Will week. that be a knife twist though for what happened last yeah. week? I mean, that'll be very painful unless you are actually in a Week Seventeen title game to have him do what he's going to do. Yes. All right, that was buy yourself from our friends at Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com is the absolute best place to get sports memorabilia, autographed, authenticated, the best in the business. And uh, we've we've known that for the last four, five years now. Use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit over there for your first sports memorabilia purchase. News and notes from around the league. All right. News for Week 17. The Rams have placed Cooper Cup on the reserve COVID list and Daryl Henderson on the IR. They already are going to be without Jared Goff. And this is setting up to just be humiliating for us as Cardinal fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know what's happening. The The Cardinals will lose to the Rams defense. Um, speaking further on Cooper Cup, you're right, Mike. He is not. He is not officially tested positive that we know of, so his timeline would allow him to return, just not practice if he this was a week close. if he's a close contact and continues to test negative. So there's the chance that he is out there, but we have to follow the news on that. All right, Mason Rudolph will start at quarterback for Pittsburgh in Week 17 against the Browns, so... It's a big deal. Say goodbye, Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, Chase Claypool, confidence. Yeah, you're losing 100% of confidence in all of those players, but you're also losing confidence in the Buffalo Bills uh, because now it looks like the expectation is that the Cleveland Browns should be able to win this game, and that gives more reason for the Buffalo Bills who are locked into their position, should that happen, to say, yeah, let's maybe rest our starters. We saw what happened with Cole Beasley going down at the end of the game. Um, And And, and just to roll it back for a split second there, the reason that – so Pittsburgh's kind of giving the Browns a chance to win the game. If Pittsburgh loses, that means that the Bills don't need to win to secure the two seed. Correct. And therefore, they may be less incentivized. Beasley's down. Exactly right. And they play at the same time. So they they are both morning games. Uh, so this could be a situation of scoreboard watching where Buffalo looks up at halftime and they see that Pittsburgh is down two scores against the Browns with Mason Rudolph as the quarterback. And you go, okay, well, Josh Allen, you played a great half. You should sit down. Stephon Diggs, you should sit down. So this this creates a really unfortunate, murky situation. Now, is in terms of like, will I still play – Diggs and Allen because they could get it done in a half I mean I remember uh years ago back when when Kirk Cousins was on Washington Tom Brady could do it why can't you Josh yeah when Kirk Cousins was on Washington and it was I think it was week 16 
Kirk Cousins ended up playing a half, but he still finished as one of the top quarterbacks of the week. Uh, so Allen can get it done, but this this stinks for if you if you were locked and loaded to play Allen in your championship. League. It's risky business, yes, for sure. Matt, uh, Matt Barkley could see a lot of playing time. Yeah, I will remind you of Week 17 um, last year, where Josh Allen was the active starter, right? And he played. Let's see. Uh, eleven percent of the snaps. He was like one drive done, and you got absolutely jack squat. Yeah. So if, McDermott has the history of resting his starting quarterback. If I had, you're not moving into the the Walford tier of quarterbacks, but if I had a guaranteed starter like Derek Carr for an entire game, I'd probably pivot away from Josh Allen this week. Sure. Just to give my own advice. Ronald Jones activated. Kyle Rudolph out. I. Uh, Bill Belichick, quote, would imagine Cam Newton starts week 17. We're going through that right now. Um, I wouldn't if I were them. I'd play sit him and see what you have for a game. Doug Marone said Mike Glennon's going to start. Um, I would start Josh Allen over Mike Glennon. That's fair. Yeah. Against yeah. the Colts who are playing for a playoff spot. Okay. And the then, Colts are so funny. I don't, I don't know if you guys realize this. If like they win, ha -ha funny. Ha -ha -ha. like jokes wise, like their outlook. If they win their game, which is a must win for them. They can either win the division, barely sneak in, or be completely out of the playoffs at eleven and five. So they can be out of the playoffs even with a win against even with Jacksonville. A win. That's right. uh, a win they beat Jacksonville, I should say. <laughs> yes, win they win. <laughs> yeah, there's no chance that like I know the NFL's funky, but if there's a lock in the universe right now, it's the Colts against Jacksonville, right? Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Say that to it, week one. There's a lock. The Rams will beat the Jets, right? 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 Mm. Um, Dwayne Haskins went unclaimed on waivers. He is a free agent, ex first round quarterback, drawing some small interest from uh, Carolina right now. But uh, ew, yeah, it's unfortunate. Did you guys see the Bill Belichick quote on uh, Sam Darnold? No, <laughs> it was just very funny. Bill I would Bel love to hear Bill Belichick being Bill Belichick saying that Sam Darnold is getting the the best coaching that he possibly could get right now. Try. Oh, I got to look that up. Little gamesmanship here by Belichick trying to convince the Jets to keep Adam Gase, who which there are unconfirmed reports, but uh, uh, some some guys on uh, WFAN up in New York said they had it on good authority that after the game, Adam Gase will be flushed and yeah. he will no longer be coaching the Jets, which there it is. Thank you. Uh, it is. It's sad and happy all the same i'm happy for the jets fans i'm sad for the rest of the nation yeah well, i mean it's just a big day <laughs> for this show <laughs> all right before we get into the mailbag want to thank today's sponsor I'm talking about hymns look 66 percent of men start to lose their hair by age 35 you know you gotta ask yourself is that is that hairline going back or any bald spots yet because the best way to do something about it is before you're just completely bald that's the, you know if, if you want to actually take advantage of science and medicine and research and those things it's when you start to see it happening that you want to jump on it right away and for him is a one-stop shop for hair loss skin care wellness for men everything you need and you know the 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 founder of hymns knows that it's sometimes easier to uh i don't know on those personal things do doctor visits virtually online instead of in person, no more awkward visits or waiting room lines or pharmacy visits. Uh, and and for hims, look, they're helping you with real FDA approved products to treat hair loss. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. So today, hims is giving you the best offer yet. If you are not happy with your results after ninety days. They'll give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get your first visit absolutely free. You just go to forhims.com slash ballers. That's forhims.com slash ballers. And all prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash ballers. And for the champions oh, out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, a reminder, fantasychamps.com seems like a good place to go if you're a fantasy champ. I am a fantasy champ. And let me tell you what they're doing right now. They're offering a completely free championship ring of your choice 
if you buy a trophy or a championship belt. So your league needs a trophy. Your league, yeah, let's just say you need a belt mm -hmm. to wear on your shoulder, but you get a free ring. There are two types. There is the FFL Stunna. That's my personal favorite. There's and also the bling ring. That is actually my favorite, Mike. So. And I will, good, look, tomato, tomato. Yeah. And I will be getting a stunner ring with a customized case to, to celebrate my League of Record victory. Yeah, I will actually be doing the same. I like the bling ring usually, but I've got a lot of those. So I went with the stunner this year. <laughs> I will be buying some black uh, velvet to cover your ring case up with <laughs> to not remember <laughs> what happened. But here's the deal. It's simple. Go to fantasychamps.com. Put a trophy or belt in your cart. Put the ring of your choice in your cart. Use the code free ring. They will give you a free ring. You'll see the discount come off right there at fantasychamps.com. All right, without further ado, we're into the mailbag. 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 Yeah. All right, I'll make peace with it eventually, Mike. Mm. But probably not. Will um, you? Uh, you know the, the the best thing it won't be easy for me and it won't be quick for me if you continue to blast our slack channel with mm. the fact that you were the sixth seed and mm. uh yes the fact that i was mm. the, the whatever the three i was gonna say that the, the good thing for you is i will constantly remind you that i won and I will constantly <laughs> pretend that league doesn't exist and that the Dynasty <laughs> League is the only one that exists. Because that is what we do as fantasy players. That mm -hmm. is. Cope. We cope. All right. We're into the mailbag today. If you have a question for us, uh, we'll be doing some, like we got an AMA show coming up, right? Yeah. Those are really, really fun. Yeah, in a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, where you can ask questions like, would Jason be funnier if he had hair? Like that is a kind. That's an AMA. I believe you were asked that question. I was asked that question. Yeah, it's impossible because Pretty, you're already maxed out. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it doesn't uh, hair weight. It doesn't matter. You can't. I mean, how could I possibly get funnier? You are. <laughs> I, I I challenge you with that statement, which means that one of these shows we're just gonna need to slap a wig on you, okay, and see if you're <laughs> funnier. But like a really good one. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. yeah. You like, can't even tell. Like, did you get a new haircut? Where's all those luscious locks coming from? <laughs> that would be very... Did you, did you get new haircuts? <laughs> well, you know, like a video game style. Uh, a reverse you go, haircut. You go, you, yeah. just, you go to the <laughs> barber and all of a sudden you get a totally different head of hair. <laughs> that would be very funny. All right. If you have a question, though, uh, send in your AMA questions. Send in your, your fantasy questions, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Uh, do we have to clarify the the uh, baby Josh voicemail from yesterday? Oh, well, we can. Yeah, it, it's look. We'll, we'll clear the air. It turns out it was not baby Josh. It was it was a different intern. Yes, Austin. It was Austin. Yeah. And uh, and look, here's the thing. We don't train any of our interns to do that, by the way, to well, celebrate. Well, before I mean, you I mean, win. I mean, I I do. I tell them okay. it's, it's the best way to do it. So if you have a voicemail to taunt one of our interns, use their name. Mm, that's good. That's use, a good point. You can use their name. Yeah. All right. Let's start with the voicemail question. Hey, ballers. Should I keep Stefan Diggs or Jonathan Taylor? Uh, it's a half PPR league. Uh, I don't lose any picks for keeping them. Thanks, guys. That's a, that's a really good question. Yeah, it's rough. My initial reaction is it's going to be Jonathan Taylor because Jonathan Taylor will be drafted, I believe, he will be drafted higher than Stefan Diggs. And usually when you're making these decisions, that's the easiest first frame of reference as you look at you know average draft position it's not my answer but I understand that that <laughs> might not be the right answer because Jonathan Taylor has a lot of question marks and quarterback Stefan Diggs I mean what he answered this year is he uh, you know he is a top five option he's a weekly stud he's a PPR machine he's got upside he's got floor he has everything and with Josh Allen going forward uh, he has provided security and upside that few can do. So you're keeping. You're I keeping, will take digs. I'll make the digs decision. You like digs? Digsition? No. <laughs> no. I need to shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Which which side do you lean? Um, that is so brutal. Uh, Marlon Mack is not under contract next year. Is that that is correct? correct? So, Naeem Hines is, I believe. 
So it will be it'll be Taylor and Hines again. And we assume Phil Rivers again? No. I don't. I, I believe See, that, it. That's a question mark. Was that for a me. one year or a two year? I believe it was a one I year, but you can vet year. that. I'm going to look that up. Uh, but we, as of right now, so it's not through the week 17 yet, but St- Stephon Diggs is the wide receiver three on the year in half point. Stephon Diggs has eight touchdowns. So the fact that Stephon you. Stephon Diggs has probably 1,500 yards, though, right? And 115 yeah, he had, receptions or yes, something. Yes, he has 120 receptions and over yeah. 1,400 yards. But, I mean, that's my point is. He's going to be utilized heavily, and he's a top three wide receiver right now with only eight touchdowns. Okay, so you were saying the eight is a low number. Yes. Gotcha. For, think- a, for a top three wide receiver, that is a low amount of touchdowns, so there's still room to go and up. A low amount of touchdowns, especially considering he got – Almost half of them this last week. He he was you know he was yeah, on a very last, slow touchdown. In the pace. last three weeks, he has scored half of his touchdowns. Breaking news! All right, Dalvin Cook is out this week. Breaking Ooh. news: Dalvin Cook out of this game. Unexpected family emergency. Had to return to Miami. Will be unavailable to play in the season finale against Detroit. Oh, I would I would be running. Mike Boone to get. Yeah, well, whoever Madison missed last week. So. Yeah, that, man, that's tough. But against Detroit, the running game will be oh great. Goodness, it, it, are we doing Mike Boone? It, I think championship it's, I week think it's again. Mike Boone is the pickup right now. Do you Madison remember last is, year? Yeah, oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, he actually Mike Boone scored last week and almost killed me and Mike by yes. doing so on the goal line. So I think uh, monitor Madison. He's still questionable. He's missed a couple weeks in the last uh, three. So. <sighs> But Mike Boone is the next man up. Yeah, right now he is. Yeah, yeah. So Detroit is. Whew. Yeah, yeah. A good time. You can do a lot and a half against Detroit. They, they might agree to just not play this game. Just white. Just, just white flag, white towel. Yeah. And yeah. Just like, Did they play last game? <laughs> that's that's what I mean. Like, yeah. These teams have nothing. They're just like, let's hang out. Maybe they'll have a like a buffet or something. Oh yeah, yeah. You could do that. Let's meet All at right. the 50 for the turkey. Voicemail question. Hey, ballers. If you have Justin Herbert on your team in a dynasty league and Russell Wilson, would you think about trying to move on from Russell Wilson for a younger asset right now? Thanks. Love the show. Mm, yes. I pro- I, so I probably personally wouldn't. Um, I'm, I'm not unwilling. Uh, obviously, if you can get a lot, get a haul, especially if it comes with maybe another young quarterback, but I – in my dynasty leagues, I like to have two good options at quarterback. You, you, you know, I know you only play one, and if you've got a great op, you got Mahomes, you're not gonna bench him. But in a dynasty league, you can't just go to the waiver wire. You can't pick, you know, guys up as easily. And so I like to have um, more options. And and also, I I know how great Herbert was, and I believe in him fully. I project expect that he is going to be awesome. I did the same thing with Baker after his rookie year. He was unbelievable. In a short period of time, he held the rookie touchdown record, just like Herbert did this year. It's not a guarantee. I, I believe it. But to me, I, I would trade Russ if I could get a lot back. If I could get a Joe Burrow plus you know running back wide receiver, oh, fantastic. But otherwise, I want to have two good quarterbacks. I can't disagree with anything you said. I mean, and then you make a good point. I believe in Herbert, but... It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, Carson Wentz was an NFL MVP candidate, and, and it's hard to – like, Russ is so established. He turns 33, uh, I believe, this next year, so he's got a lot of good football left. Good points, Mr. Moore. Are you talking about the Colts starter, Carson Wentz? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I don't, man. Did you figure the contract out? No, I know. I got, we, I know we got, I got breaking distracted. News. We had the, the yeah. Dalvin Cook situation. I'll pull that up. Um but uh oh boy it was a one year okay we have more news uh lamichael p ryan has tested positive for COVID 19 and is out oh goodness gracious so and we know frank gore's out so now ty johnson is an actual like legit start this week hopefully contract tracing is going on right now so because he's running back we've seen this sometimes that's the room that gets uh affected by your mask wearing that's a good point all right, uh, here we go. Instagram question. 
I haven't been able to listen to the podcast lately due to a brand new baby. Oh, oh, congratulations. But curious who took home the trophy from your show. Oh, what a good question. All of us? Yes. All of us. I got the Dino Jr. along with my co-owner. Maybe you've heard of him. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Hello. Andy, you got our main dynasty league. Congratulations. And Mike, our league of record, which I will say this. All three of us would admit the most important league to us is the league of record. Yes. Agreed. Hmm. <laughs> Twitter question. Yo, 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 ballers. Oh, yo. Love the show. Thank you for everything you do. Need help at quarterback. Would you play Mitch Trubisky or Matt Ryan with no Julio this week? Mm. Four point touchdown, one point per completion. Um, it's tough. Wait, I know did Cal he say one point per completion? Yep. That's a big deal here. It is. Yeah, and I, I would probably go Matt Ryan. I think Calvin Ridley is listed as my number one wide receiver this week. Calvin Ridley's very good. He's, he, Calvin Ridley's going to be very interesting this offseason of saying where do you draft him with a – not just the, the factor of Julio Jones' age and his ability to stay healthy, but – like right now, just off the top of your head, where where is Calvin Ridley? Do you think he's slotting in as in your wide receiver ranks? I top it, top three round pick. Yeah, yeah. Second yeah. round pick. It's tough. I feel like he'll be around my top ten wide receiver. Top, I was gonna say he he'll be around wide receiver ten. At least I think he'll guess. be higher than that for me. I uh, the question that popped into my head immediately was Michael Thomas or Calvin Ridley next year. Ooh, wow. I mean, Ooh, that's hot. It because you. I mean, it's a tough question. Who are it the really quarterbacks, is. though? Well, right. I mean, the the quarterbacks probably not Drew Brees. So right. that is where I look at those names and I wonder if Calvin's going to go higher. <clears throat> Calvin is really, really good at football. Yes, he is. Um, what he's done, like the Rulio eleven that applies to Matt Ryan, does not apply. In, pla in fact, it applies the opposite to Calvin Ridley. He's a 120-plus yard guy every single time Julio misses a game. So I'd go Matt Ryan. I, I would go Matt Ryan as well. I, I believe Trubisky has the Green Bay Packers, not a great matchup. So I would, uh, especially if you're getting points yeah, per completion. All right. Uh, we do have another voicemail question. Hey, ballers. Um, so I'm in the second week of my fantasy championship. I have to bench Tyreek Hill because he's not going to be playing this week. Who's the better plug and play, Emmanuel Sanders or Michael Gallup? Who? Who? I'm going to play Michael Gallup over Manny Sanders, who is the number one option. Uh, yep, I am. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders does not represent a potential big week at all. I mean, he's <laughs> over the last two weeks with no Michael Thomas. Emmanuel Sanders is averaging about 80 yards, four for 80. Yep, that's not enough for me. I, I, I would agree that Emmanuel Sanders has the higher floor. I think because of the three-headed trifecta and the good defense of the Giants, Gallup is scary to play. Uh, I do agree with Andy, though, that the ceiling, if you wanted a big 100-yard, two-touchdown game, I feel like that's more likely to come from Gallup than an aged Emmanuel Sanders. So this might be one of those situations where you look at your lineup and you say, "Am I am I favored? Am I projected to win?" Am I? And the it's also on? the second year of. Or he said it was the second week of the championship. So oh, you're, you're uh, talking cumulative points, here. right? So you, even more information. If you're up and you want to secure your existing lead, I would go Emmanuel Sanders. But if you need the home run shot, what are the Saints playing for this week? Uh, they are playing for <clears throat> position. I believe is it. I mean, they is play it possible for them to get? The number one seed has Green Bay locked it. I think I think it's out. I, I don't think it's locked, but I do. I, I've got it for you. Just a second here. Um, I think they can get the buy. Uh, just might take a lot of. The New Orleans Saints have clinched the South in inner week seventeen against the Carolina Panthers as the number two seed. They are still alive for the number one seed. Packers hold the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Um, so the Bears have to beat the Packers. I don't know. I'm on, a, I'm on a playoff generator, and, and if the Saints win and the Bears win, it still has New Orleans as the second seed. Really? Yeah. That is not what I'm seeing. Oh, that's good. 
<laughs> they have a three-way tiebreaker and would win the number one seed in the event of a Saints win, Packers loss, Seahawks win. Okay, mm. there you go. So the Seahawks win is the, the intangible there. Um, so I didn't realize the Seahawks were still alive for the number one seed. So they actually get the first round bye because there's only one bye. That's really important to note. And there's only um, if the Packers and Saints lose and the Seahawks win, they've got the bye week. Crazy. It is. All right, let's go to a Twitter question here uh, from Brian. Which of these tumultuous rookie running backs has the best outlook for next season? J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, or DeAndre Swift? Oh, that's a that's, that's a great question. Fun names to discuss. For me, it's J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, Cam Akers. Wow. Uh, for me, I put Cam Akers number one out of these three because I believe in the offense. I believe in what we saw before he got injured in the running game. Uh, we know the quarterback, and I think Cam Akers can be a dominant fantasy option next year uh, if it's he very stays interesting. If he stays healthy, huh. then then I would go DeAndre Swift, then J.K. Dobbins, in the sense that Dobbins unfortunately, I don't think is ever going to get the workload. He'll be the man. He'll be the first guy up. And we've seen great performances from Mark Ingram in that timeshare, but he's going to be splitting with Gus or with Lamar Jackson. Um, and, and Swift, I think, is probably the most talented of the three. But who's the quarterback for the Lions? Very interesting difference of opinion here, Mike. Where do you weigh in on this? Because to me, the path for Dobbins is very, very clear. And we saw more of Dobbins this year than Akers, but. Yeah, we, we've we've seen more a, a larger sample size, but we have seen that when Acres is the featured back, it's twenty plus opportunities, you know, twenty two opportunities, thirty two opportunities, eighteen opportunities in the game where he got hurt against uh, the New York Jets. What what you are seeing from Dobbins right now, that's what I expect you'll see next year in terms of his opportunities. I, Dobbins is fantastic. I, I I had Dobbins ranked higher than DeAndre Swift in my just rookie prospect rankings. Uh, and then I'm looking at the contract situation. You know, Gus Edwards is currently on a one year. Uh, so he's a, a restricted free agent next year. They'll probably bring him back because you'll be able to get Gus Edwards for a, a lower contract. Mark Ingram is going to be gone. But I think what you're seeing right now, I'm, that's what I'm projecting next year for the Ravens backfield situation. Yeah, where, Mark Ingram hasn't even been... In well, but game. I'm saying, like, I, I expect Gus will be back. I expect it'll still be a two running back situation, and you have Lamar Jackson uh, poaching touchdowns at the goal line all the time. Jared Goff's not going to steal touchdowns away from Cam Akers when they get to the goal line. So I'm, I'm going to rank them: Akers, Dobbins, Swift. Uh, we were looking at the situation for the Detroit Lions of Marvin Jones is not under contract next year. Kenny Galladay is a free agent next year. Then they can franchise Kenny Galladay, but the Lions have a lot of stuff that they need to figure out. I don't even know if the Lions bring Matthew Stafford back. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, that's, that's which would another. be the dumbest thing on the face of the planet for a franchise trying to rebuild, having a franchise quarterback just sitting there that's 33 years old with tons of football left, but you just don't know. Yeah, those things do happen. Uh, Instagram question, is Keenan Allen a top five wide receiver next season? Yes. Yep. He is for me. I agree. I can't imagine he's not. <laughs> I mean, you have Adams and Diggs are in the top five. Mm -hmm. you, have you have Hopkins Tyreek. and Tyreek. So this is where it, it, Hopkins and Tyreek are both top five. Yep, they're locked in. So now the, the last spot is the question. Uh, and and I, I would throw Diggs into this last spot area. Um, well, he's uh, ahead of Diggs. I'd take over Hopkins. Yeah, but not you. So Tyreek and Devontae Adams are one and two, right? In in whatever order sure. you want, I think Diggs belong could easily belong at at two. D so, Diggs is the best non Devonte Adams option, I think. I so think that's where I'd slot him. Then you're talking Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Correct. um, I mean, yeah, right Met, there. Metcalf in consideration. Yeah, for you at Metcalf all? is absolutely in consideration there. Yeah, and then th the Julio's will circle back and. Yeah, the the thing is, if if Keenan is not in your initial top five, I don't have a problem with that. But seems like he belongs right there. But he is—he's he, he, easily a top ten. 
but he would be in my top five. He's, I believe in Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen's just going to get, he's going to continue to get peppered with targets because he's always open. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you, how do you evaluate his season with Herbert and then the absence of Eckler for that portion of the year too? And the, that's, that is a fair point. That would be the only thing that pops into my mind is a question mark around Keenan. Um, you did see the target share go down. Justin Jefferson's going to be entering top 10 area too, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, probably. Um, this is why you got to stick around for the off season. Yeah, people. it's a fun thought experiment that we haven't done yet, yes. right? Where you're you're seeing it live. <laughs> Our heads <laughs> heads start to so think about it. There, there's a three game stretch here after Austin Eckler came back before Keenan Allen got hurt, taking out that the game that he got injured in. In those three games, obviously, very very small sample here. But while he had Herbert, who was on fire at this point and Eckler in the lineup, it was a 16-game pace of 96 receptions for only 746 yards but 10 touchdowns. So he was used very short, um, you know, screen game and uh, short route targets. Too little to extrapolate from, but it, it certainly wasn't the top five Keenan that we saw without Eckler. So maybe that'll end up being the tiebreaker when you're looking at, you know, Michael Thomas or those type of guys. All right, Instagram question from Mighty Merkley. What are some things that our Dynasty League can do to stay active during the offseason? Uh, first of all, trades are now open. Yes. In all Dynasty Leagues. If yours aren't, then open the gates and seize the day. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, you could play some pickleball or something. But Yeah, sure. I mean, get together. Get uh, you know, stay IRL with, uh, with your Dynasty mates. Yeah, this is the time where for me when i'm thinking about dynasty i am active but i am active underground i'm not making trades right now unless someone comes to me and they, they and they blow me away of they're going to give me uh, a, a what i perceive as a great deal for myself but this is where i'm i'm looking at the research i'm i'm starting to dive into the rookies we are this is our full time gig so we don't have time to evaluate college prospects during the nfl season so this is where we are all catching up, uh, figuring out how I rank the rookies, letting the free agency uh, start of changing the value of how I see players. So I'm I'm in education and evaluation mode right now, which is to me that's still active. I mean, it I may not be I mean, you may not perceive me as active inside the league, but this is where you got to do your own evaluations and figuring that stuff out. So. And then the league will start picking back up probably around March, March, April. Yeah, really from the Super Bowl time until March 1st is a little bit of the quiet zone, mm -hmm. but then it gets going pretty quick. It's the so. eye of the hurricane. All right, last one from Instagram. Big Data Brett says, How do you, how's your rank determined against other rankers? For instance, when you say that Andy was ranked fourth amongst all rankers, how is that? determined there is a long and arduous process you can read an article about it but it, essentially what it does the simplest way to put it is where we rank players versus where they finish our uh, allocated fantasy points and then the addition and subtraction at the end of the year you have thousands of what's recalled what's referred to as gap points and uh, lowest I think the, the simple way to say it is uh, rank is is how you perform against a general benchmark consensus so there's a general ranking every week of where, you know, hundreds of experts, if you combine their rankings, that's the consensus. And then you're ranked compared to how you perform against the benchmark. Right. Uh, all right. Anything else we need to talk about? Anything else going on? Brooks, how are you doing? Doing, doing all great. right. Al, how are you doing? Doing well. We got prep. We got to prep for the Mer for the Merga 17. Well, we've got, we have the foot cast. Oh. We have the footcast this afternoon, which you can uh, get a bonus episode every week, which bonus. is very valuable from you know January through June when we're two shows a week. You get an extra, mm -hmm. and that is uh, one of the perks, many perks over at jointhefoot.com. The off-season footcasts are some of my favorite thing every week. We have so much fun on that show. It's almost like a, a spitballers podcast, which you can check that out as well. Yeah, yeah it is a lot of fun, so... All right, that'll do it for today's episode. We'll be back with that uh, 
that breathy Megalodon show tomorrow. <laughs> Take care, Foot Clan. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.